Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamine Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Pracharine Nirvase Shashanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakao Patarupyas Chakri Pasindu Bhaihevacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're studying uh, Srimad Bhagavatam Thir Kanto and we're on chapters number today we're going to look at chapters 17 18 and 19 which will finish this unit and uh, we're going to hear about the battle between lord varaha and haranyaksha in the 13th chapter it was introduced to us about the appearance of lord varaha but there was no real description of the confrontation between Lord Varaha and Haran, Haranyaksha. So we'll hear about that today in the course of these chapters. Now, uh, I need to share the, share the screen, Prabhu. Maharaj, you are co-host already. Well, it's telling me that I can't share the screen. It isn't, Prabhu. So in the 17th chapter, the main point which is brought out in the 17th chapter was about inauspicious omens and the uh, indications which we get from these in inauspicious omens that we have here from the purport, 17th chapter, text number 15. We can learn from the description of the Srimad Bhagavatam that it is because of the birth of two great demons that there were so many natural disturbances. It is to be indirectly understood, as previously described, that when there are constant disturbances on the earth, that is an omen that some demonic people have been born or that the demonic population has increased. In former days there were only two demons, those born of Diti, yet there were so many disturbances. At the present day, especially in this age of Kali, these disturbances are always visible, which indicates that the demonic population has certainly increased. So maybe somebody would like to tell me, what do you consider to be inauspicious omens? Like uh, sucking a path and uh, uh, lightning and uh, trees are uprooted by with heavy wind and uh, like that. Lightning and what? Uh, and thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. Thunderbolts. Mm. Yeah. And uh, trees are uprooted by heavy winds. Heavy, uh, heavy the, wind, trees uprooted, yeah. yes? Yeah, yes. And uh, eclipses are also there, eclipses, frequent eclipses. Eclipses, well, Lord Chaitanya was born when there was an eclipse. Yeah, but frequent eclipses, distorted. Oh, more than one eclipse at one time? Yeah. 
uh, it is stated uh, in uh, uh, that uh, frequent eclipses are there. Do we? I've never seen such a thing. Frequent eclipse. We hear about one eclipse. I never heard more than one taking place at any one time. Not not one time. Uh, at a short interval. Short interval. Oh. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Srila Prabhupada also mentions such things as uh, when it's very hot or when it's very cold. Sometimes snowfall, heavy snowfall, some parts of the world, even in this month of March. March, of course, is still winter in many parts of the world. It's cold and snow common. Even uh, in the UK, in England, I remember, I had been abroad and I was coming back to England and the, the temperature was announced that it's one degree. It was the first of May, the first of May, and the temperature was one degree. <laughs> one degree above freezing. My goodness, it, it gives you some idea what is the weather. And Prabhupada also spoke about England when he was asked, that, that he was on the interview, and probably you've all heard that quote. But anyway, the interviewer asked him, what was it like in hell? And Prabhupada immediately replied, he said, oh, England, he said, this is just like hell. He said, you never see the sun, every day cloudy and rainy. So this is demonic kind of environment, demonic civilizations which are there. Okay, so... To, a, a bit more of the purport there. To check the increase of demonic population, the Vedic civilization enacted so many rules and regulations of social life, the most important of which is the Garbhadhan process for begetting good children. In Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna informed Krishna that if there is unwanted population, Varna Sankara, the entire world will appear to be hell. So, uh, this is uh, the main point. Uh, in the 17th chapter, there was discussion about why was so, there was so much darkness everywhere. And it was explained because of the two demons who were held in the womb of Diti. Right? How long did she keep them in the womb for? How long were the two... Uh, the two 100, 100, 100 years. 100, 100 years, right. But so that's a long time for a woman to undergo pregnancy. She, she was no ordinary woman, of course, and eventually she gave birth. And when at the time of the birth of the two children, then all of these different inauspicious omens were present. All the earthquakes and uh, hurricanes and cyclones and these kind of things. These are all indications that demonic population are taking birth. So... Maybe if we had good, if everybody had good children, maybe the weather on the planet would improve. I don't know about that. Difficult to change the weather in some of these countries. Just the nature of the country that they have very unhealthy, very inauspicious climates. But where you have that kind of environment, it's very appropriate that demonic people take birth there. Okay, so that's the, the, seven, the main point from the 17th chapter. It was describing about the condition at the time of the birth. And then we heard, it was described about uh, the two sons, Haranyakashipu and Haranyaksha. Which one was older? Which one was conceived first in the womb? 
Hirana Hirana Kasipu is uh, elder to Hiranakya because he was born second but he was conceived first. Okay. That is the, that yes. is the twin birth rule. Right. He was conceived first, so he was elders. Kashyapa considered him to be the eldest son. So they're described how their bodies were very strong, almost like steel, and they were very much inclined towards uh, fighting and they had the angry mood. Demons often have that nature, they're angry and irritable, easily angered. And so Haranyaksha was going everywhere looking for a fight. He wanted to challenge people to battle. And after some time, he came across Varuna, the god of the, the ocean, and he challenged Varuna to a fight. But what did, what did Varuna have to say? Varuna advised to meet, Brahma, to meet Brahma, from whom he can receive advices. No, I don't think that's what happened. Varuna, Varuna said he is old. Yes. Varuna said he is old and uh, he may meet Narada, Narada so that he, can, he will tell you uh, who will be your uh, opponent. Oh. He told to meet Lord Vishnu. Yes. Because he is the perfect combat for Hiranyaksha. Right. Thank you, Mataji. Yes. First of all, Varuna said, I'm old. So because he was old, it, what, did he, what did that mean? He cannot fight. He's right. saying he's weak. Yeah, he's not going to be a good match for Haranyaksha. Because Haranyaksha is a young man. He's got a strong body. He's physically empowered, you know, he's got this big strong body and, and he wants a fight, he wants a good fight. But Varuna said he's old, he said he wouldn't give, give me a, a suitable match for him. Old age, in old age we don't have that same passion anymore. You know, when we were young people, we used, we used to be young and energetic. You know, I, I, I sometimes recall you know how in the young day, in the days, in the beginning of our movement in the 1970s, the devotees would often go along to the Ganga and bathe in the Ganga. And sometimes in the course of bathing in the Ganga, devotees will challenge one another to wrestling matches. <laughs> and you know, one of the best champion wrestlers was His Holiness Jaipataka Swami Maharaj. He was really, you know, powerful, really strong, and he knew wrestling. <laughs> so he was really, you know, he was good. And he was, he's a good swimmer also. One time, he, those two sports, wrestling and swimming, they're considered Vedic sports. In Vedic sports, you know, we don't play cricket and football and these things, but wrestling and swimming, okay, they're kind of Vedic. And so Jaipataka Swami was a strong swimmer. One time in Malaysia, we were on a retreat and it was on, a, on an island there, uh, a place called, oh, I forget the name of the island now anyway. But anyway, Jai, uh, Jaipataka Swami was enjoying swimming there and in the course of his swimming, he ended up saving two young boys. And there were two young boys, they were out in the sea and they couldn't get back to the shore. The current was so strong, they couldn't get back to the shore. And they asked Machapitaka Maharaj to help them, to save them. So he brought them both back, one, one after another, he brought them back to the shore. So he was, you know, he was, that's uh, Jaipataka Maharaj, he saves many people, physically and spiritually. And he's still saving people spiritually, but nowadays he's not so able to serve people physically. Anyway, uh, Ranyaksha was told, Varuna, Varuna said he's too old to fight, but he said, you find Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu will be a good, he'll give you a good battle. He'll give you a good beating. You won't be able to beat him. You go and find Lord Vishnu. You want a good fight? Yeah, go and find Vishnu. 
So that's what happened. Haranyaksha went everywhere looking for Lord Vishnu to find him. And of course, he, eventually he did find him. Where did he find him? Where did they meet? In the Garbadak Ocean. In the Garbadak Ocean, yes. And how is it described? What was Lord Vishnu doing at the time? Lord Vishnu. the earth. Yes, he'd come in the form of Lord Varaha and he's picking up the earth. And how did Haran Yaksha greet him? What did he say to him? Yeah, very um, <laughs> reprimanded, uh, something like that. Uh, Was he very nice to him? <laughs> no. No. He called him. Yeah. He said, Oh, look, an amphibious beast. Amphibious beast. Amphi amphibious means can live on the land and in the water. So it's amphibious. And he's a beast. So he called Lord Varaha like that. So how does Lord Varaha respond to that kind of talk when, the Lord, when some demon speaks to him? Is that very pleasing to him? If somebody calls you an amphibious beast, what will you think? It's very nice actually described. If you read the Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Varaha then responds, he said, Yes, true, I am a beast of the forest and I'm just meant for hunting dogs like you. <laughs> true it is that I'm a beast of the jungle and I'm meant for hunting dogs like you. <laughs> so, you know, he really, you know, he, he came back at Haranyaksha. And the, just like sometimes, uh, sometimes if you see the, the fox hunt or the boar hunt, sometimes they have these events, you know, the people will, people come on horses and they have a pack of dogs and they go after wild boars or foxes. And sometimes the wild boar, the wild boar, they have like this ra razor sharp horn. So the wild boar, they can really fight too. And the dogs, these dogs, they have a pack of dogs who go after the wild boar. And the, the dogs all come, and, but the boar, he's really, you know, he's got his razor sharp horn and he cuts into these dogs. And he lets, you know, when they go hunting for the wild boars, they bring back a couple of, two or three injured dogs. They're really cut to pieces by the boar, you know. And so, it's all expressed there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Varaha said, yes, true it is, I'm a beast of the jungle, I'm meant for hunting dogs like you. <laughs> so Lord Varaha challenges uh, Haranyaksha, you know, don't just talk, let's see your prowess. And of course they began to fight with each other. Actually, of course, this was the reason for Haranyaksha's birth. We know that Jai and Vijay took birth because the Lord wanted to have a good fight. So this Haranyakashipu and Haranyaksha have come. They're actually Jai and Vijay, but they have come with the intention of giving a good fight to the Lord. And Jiva Goswami, he analyzes some of the verses and he points out, he said, actually, uh, Haranyaksha is not really the enemy of the Lord. And the Lord is not really angry either. Although it may appear sometimes like the Lord is angry, but actually he's not really angry. He's just pretending. It's just all fun. It's all in the drama, if you like. Lord Varaha is enjoying the drama and he wants to have a good fight. And they do, they have a wonderful fight. And the, the demigods are watching, and they're seeing Lord Varaha, and Lord Brahma's also watching. And Lord Brahma's urging Lord Varaha, don't play with him any longer, just kill him. Because if it gets to darkness, then the demons become more powerful in the dark. Just like in the darkness, you know, creatures like snakes, they become more powerful. You have to be very careful in the dark. 
the, the snakes around. In the daylight, usually they won't bother you, but in the night, they're more powerful. So these demonic species also, they become more powerful in the dark. So Lord Varaha is fighting with Haranyaksha. And Lord Varaha, Haranyaksha is using, of course, his mace. And sometimes the trident, he came with the trident. And, but Lord Varaha had his Surashan chakra and he cut the, the tridents to pieces. And Lord uh, Haranyaksha at one point also uses his magical powers to invoke so many different demons and horrible rakshasas and yakshas and they all appeared before Lord Varaha but Lord Varaha just used his Surasan chakra and he got rid of all the magic of Haranyaksha and then Haranyaksha rushed forward and he tried to crush Lord Varaha in his embrace because Lord Varaha's body is as strong as steel. So he thought when he gets his arms around Lord Varaha, he would crush him to pieces. And so the demon rushed forward and thought he was going to get his arms around Lord Varaha, but Lord Varaha was outside of his arms. And Haranyaksha was amazed. He thought he was embracing Lord Varaha, and then he found Lord Varaha was outside of his embrace. So what did that indicate? What was the point there? What did that pastime indicate? Demoniac people cannot approach him, but he is approachable by his devotees. Patimbar means the prowess of the uh, materialistic people in the world that uh, can be defeated by the Lord Himself. Lord is unlimited. Uh, uh, with the limited arms of Hiranyaksha, uh, he is trying to measure the Lord. So it is uh, not possible. Yes, right. The Lord is not understood by material means. Prabhupada mentions that uh, with the limited capacity, we cannot measure the length and breadth of this uh, Lord. Right, yes. The Lord cannot be understood by our material senses. And certainly demons cannot con conquer or control or tie up or restrict the Lord and His activities. By His inconceivable potencies, He can overcome everyone. We remember Mother Yashoda, how she labored so much to try to tie up baby Krishna. And it was only when Lord Krishna finally surrendered and allowed Mother Yashoda to tie him up that she could do it. So certainly a demon like Ranyaksha, he's not going to be able to tie up Lord Varaha. All right, would someone like to read this uh, purport which we have on, this, on the screen here just now? The, the demon... Yes, Prabhu, go ahead. Uh, Prabhu, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The demon Hiranyakya, upon seeing the Lord face to face, wanted to make a permanent solution by killing the personality of God with his powerful mess. The example of an operated tree mentioned here by the demon is very significant. Devotees accept that God is the root of everything. Their example is that just as the stomach is the source of energy of all the limbs of the body, God is the original source of all energy manifested in the material and spiritual worlds. Therefore, as supplying food to the stomach is the process to satisfy all the limbs of the body, Krishna consciousness or developing love of Krishna is a sublime method for satisfying the source of all happiness. The demon wants to approve this source, of, uh, this source because if the root, that is God, were to be checked, the activities of the Lord and the devotees would automatically stop. The demon would be very much satisfied by such a situation in society. Demons are always, yes, al yes. always anxious to have a godless society for their sense gratification. Right? That's quite common in the world today, becoming more common. The demons want a godless society. 
they don't want God in the world today. They just want sense gratification. So the demons always try to remove God from everything. They try to check his activities. And this was, we're seeing this even in the Satya Yuga, of course, in this, in the, this, at the time of Lord Varaha, there was only two demons. Today there's so many demons, so, so much godlessness. So they're trying to oppose. Okay. So Lord Varaha had, you know, well, Haranyaksha had spoken abusive words and Lord Varaha had replied to them. And Prabhupada comments on this, although the Lord was pained, oh, this is not Prabhupada, this is the Srimad Bhagavatam, this is uh, the description. Although the Lord was pained by the shaft-like abusive words of the demon, he bore the pain. But seeing that the earth on the ends of his tusks was frightened, he rose out of the water, just as an elephant emerges with its female companion when assailed by an alligator. <laughs> of course, you get these, you know, very frightening situations sometimes, the elephant with his female companion. We know that from Gajendra Moksha, how Gajendra was bathing, and that was in the higher planets. And Gajendra was the king of elephants, and he had a whole herd. He had a whole entourage with several wives and children, and they'd all been bathing and enjoying the nice cool water in the lake, when suddenly an alligator, or maybe it was a crocodile, came and fights with the elephant. So in the same way, uh, it was described here, Lord Varaha rose out of the water, just like the elephant, when assailed by an alligator. So Lord Varaha bore the pain, because he has another duty to perform. Why did he tolerate the pain? Because he was doing some other duty, he was carrying the earth on the ends of his tusk. He had to put the earth back into position. What had happened to the earth? Lord Varaha placed the earth on the, uh, uh, like floating, and by his glance he just uh, stay, kept the earth floating, then he going to check this uh, demon. But what had happened to the earth initially? That was, uh, the earth had drowned into the ocean. It was not there in the planetary how, system. How did it fall into the ocean? Because of Hiranyaksha's activities. What was he doing? He hid so much of gold uh, in the earth and because of that heaviness. Well, he was digging up the earth. Right? He was digging up the earth, looking for gold, collecting all the gold. That's what he was doing. He was digging up the earth. And so it created some in instability and the earth fell into the bottom of the Garbodak Ocean. So who asked for the earth to be picked up? Um, that uh, Sangoman. Sangoman. Yes. Swayam Bhupa Man. Lord Brahma. Right. Yeah. And what did Lord Brahma do? <laughs> Brahma is wondering where, how, where it is the earth is there and how to go. So at that time, Lord Bohr come, uh, came from his nostril. Yes, right. Good. Yes. Lord Varaha appeared. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, yes. We, uh, we read earlier that Maharaj uh, only once Hiranyaksha was killed by Lord Varaha. Uh, so other times, why the uh, why the earth submerges in the ocean? Why what? 
why the earth submerges in the ocean when Hiranyaksha was there only once killed by Lord? Other times, uh, why did, does it go under the water? Well, it was described. Of course, there was two different Varahas different, at different times. So one Varaha came to pick up the earth from the bottom of the ocean and the other Varaha came to fight with Haranyaksha. Yes, Maharaj, that was at different, different times. Yes, that was a different time. Yeah. So? so each, yes, Maharaj. So each time the earth submerges in water due to uh, the digging by Haranyaksha? No. The earth only fell into the bottom of the universe one time. Okay. Okay, Maharaj. Another question I had, Maharaj. It's often said that the earth is made to float on the water of the Garboda portion. But my, my doubt was that there are 14 planetary systems and all the 14 planetary systems are above the Garboda portion. So how can earth be floating on the surface of water? There are seven planetary systems below the earth also. Well, my understanding was he put the earth to float on the water just for some time. But he has to go and take care of the, you know, he's, in the, he's challenged by Haranyaksha, so he has to deal with the challenge of Haranyaksha. So after dealing with Haranyaksha, then he'll put the earth back into position. Okay, okay, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Okay, so go ahead. Someone like to read this next section? Although the Lord was, sorry, the, May the Mayavadi philosopher cannot understand that the Lord has feelings. The Lord is satisfied if someone offers him a nice prayer. And similarly, if someone decreases his existence or calls him by ill names, God is dissatisfied. In this case, although the Lord felt sorrow from the piercing word of the demon, he delivered the earth for the satisfaction of the demigods who are ever his devotees. The conclusion is that God is, a, is as sentient as we are. He is satisfied by our prayers and dissatisfied by our harsh words against him. In order to give protection to his, his devotee, he is always ready to tolerate insulting words from the atheists. Mm. <laughs> In order to give protection to his devotees, he is ready to tolerate the words of the atheists. So this is the kindness of the Lord, right? That he will take the criticism and the insulting words of the atheists because he cares more about his devotees. And the Lord is satisfied by our prayers and dissatisfied by our harsh words against. Now we see sometimes harsh words, different demons. You know, there was a one demon uh, he wrote a letter to Krishna and, and told Krishna that you should give me that Surasan Chakra, that I am the Supreme Lord, not you. You know, he was really a demon. And he was such a demon, he was taking, he stuck two arms on, extra arms on. So we see in the, in the tenth canto a number of different demons, how they say some very nasty things sometimes to Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna has to respond to them also. That they say these nasty words to Krishna, Krishna can say nasty words back to them. But the Lord at the same time, he's a person and if somebody speaks nicely to him and offers nice prayers, then the Lord is pleased. Offering nice prayers, generally we want to glorify the Lord, 
They want to describe his wonderful qualities and his mercy and his compassion on his devotees. All of these different features of the Lord is very important for us. And we see from, we're learning from the Srimad Bhagavatam how to pray to the Lord. Every time we go through Srimad Bhagavatam, we'll come across some different prayers which are offered by devotees. So we learn how to pray to the Lord. And praying, of course, is one of the nine kinds of devotional service. But particularly, Akrura, his prayers are very famous. It said Akrura got perfection simply by praying to the Lord. So we want to cultivate a prayerful mood offer prayers. Of course, we have the Hare Krishna mantra, which is a perfect prayer. But also, we should be able to describe nice qualities of the Lord, give pleasure to Him. So here's a little application of this uh, point. How many people do we have here today in the class? Uh, Sixteen, March. 16, okay, so then we have eight pairs, so everyone can have a partner and we want you to discuss an incident when you prayed to the Lord and you felt, you actually felt some reciprocation. I hope you did. Can you just reflect on that? Just take some five minutes. We'll give you five minutes to discuss with a partner and reflect on some incident when you prayed and you felt some reciprocation from the Lord. Okay, Marj. Uh, sorry, Marj, just bear with me. Uh, So Marge, I think you're, you're going to be put into a room. Okay. I apologize. But if you just come up at the room, then I'll come into that room. That's oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Hare Krishna. So did you pray to the Lord? I was feeling very, I was feeling very sad, and then went to the temple. I prayed that I don't want to feel what I'm feeling, and after a few hours, I was feeling normal. I don't know. So that's what sensory happened. Remember, two days back. Just two days back. Two days back. What What were you praying about? I was feeling very bad, so I was not able to focus on anything. So I went to the temple and I prayed to Panchita uh, that I don't know what's happening to me, but I don't want to feel this way. So and after that, uh, after a few hours after that, I was feeling very nice and uh, normal. And then I remember how Krishna heard my prayer and because of him, I'm actually okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, good. Very nice. Just a minute. They want me. Wait. Recording in progress. Okay. Are you going to go in the room now? Hi, Krishna. Yeah, Marge. Um, so, yeah, I'll join room three. And, um, yeah. I so, think, we I said think five I, minutes, right, Marge? Yeah, yeah. I think I was in room two. Uh, yeah, I think you're in room three with Apura Nila Chaleshwari. So, I'll join that room and then, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, Hare Krishna.
notice that. Okay, Hare Krishna. Would someone like to volunteer? Tell us something what they discussed. Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Oh, Maharaj, I am Govindavdas. Shamindavata Ji was with me. We discussed how we are offering our prayers in the morning and Lord is reciprocating with us. There is a high said my feeling that I am undergoing lots, lots of obstacles in my life. I am, I am a professional in the material occupation that is causing me more stress. And by the way, being deprived of family support to proceed in devotional life. The, by the way, because uh, some illness is also intercepting on the way of devotional journey. So these are the obstacles I am facing and during my chanting in the Brahma Murta, I, I, I just said with the Lord, I pray the Lord that, Lord, please bless me. You are all powerful. Your energy is inconceivable. You can remove all obstacles. You can dismantle the hurdles that is standing against me on the way of devotional life, which is the ultimate destination of human purpose of human life. So I was Lord also assures me, I, I realize within me that is Lord assures, okay. By the way, I will definitely I will I will destroy all these obstacles and hurdles. So I am becoming delighted. I also I, I start crying sometimes. I also I used to <laughs> I become very delighted. My disappointment uh, is completely demolished. Then I become, uh, become somewhat energetic and proceed some days. Then again, same thing repeats. Then also I similarly I pray the Lord. Again, I am becoming encouraged in this way. Maharaj, I am going in my devotional life. So you feel the reciprocation from Krishna? Yeah, Maharaj in the sense that I become, I become somehow confident I, because, because the way I have been disappointed that I rejuvenate myself. I become more energetic in practicing the devotional services. So I comprehend and understand that, yeah, because of Lord Krishna's reciprocations and aswar, aswarances, I, I regain, I recover. Okay. So Krishna is definitely helping you. You feel Krishna's presence. Are you approaching Krishna as your approach to Krishna? Is it genuine devotion? Yeah, Maharaj, only for the purpose of devotion, to prosper in devotional life. Very good. Yes. That's what we want. I think Krishna also wants that also. You can hear Krishna hears everyone's prayers. But some people's prayers are more pleasing to hear than others. You know, if, if everybody just prays to Krishna to give me, give me this, I need that, give that, and the, you know, then those kind of prayers are not very pleasing to Krishna. But if we're praying to Krishna, like to thank him, Thank you, Krishna, for everything. You've given me so much. <coughs> okay. Ramiya Prabhu, you want to say something? Uh, I, I, you want me to just say my prayer experience? Yeah, please. Um, so, in late 2020, I was uh, like zonal supervisor for the Tallahassee Preaching Center. And COVID, they shut down the Krishna launch, which was their main income. And the building was found to be in severely bad repair. So the GBC had said, it's approved to close the temple and sell the building. And so a couple of days later, I called the GBC back. I said, well, first wait and see if I can do something. So I didn't know how to do anything. I didn't have any resources. There's no congregation there in the city. But somehow or other, I started the work, put some 
the first $15,000 on a credit card. They were fixing the roof. I needed another $10,000 by the end of the week. So then I had this prayer in GBC and Uttama Prabhu suggested, and he said, I should pray, my dear Lord Chaitanya, please open the doors I should go through and close the ones I should not. And then uh, give me the strength and determination to go through those doors. So I was praying this every day. And when all these bills were there and so much more work to be done, I called up one friend I hadn't talked to in about seven, eight years and just told them, you know, what was going on and looking for some thoughts. And he said, all right, how much you need? I said, well, I need $10,000 by the end of the week. So he's not a rich man, but he said, all right, I'll put the check in the mail today. And my other friend who was on the conversation, he said, well, how much money did you owe on the credit card? I said, $15,000. He said, all right, I'll pay that. So for these people, it was a, a huge donation. But, you know, like that, all the, somehow or other, step by step, fixed everything, got a new temple president, reopened Krishna lunch, and now they're going on very nicely. Wonderful. So I felt the Lord was reciprocating with my prayers. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I read that. I read that about that article. I read all about that. I remember reading that article. Very nice. It was very inspiring. I saw the pictures of the place before and after you did it up and everything. It was very nice, very encouraging. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. You're welcome. Anybody else like to contribute something? Yes, Maharaj. So, Maharaj, we discussed here Suchitra Vada Lupi and myself and His Grace Father Sahib Prabhu. So, uh, we discussed three, four. Uh, uh, such prayers, events happen. So one uh, I want to, I would like to share. So in uh, Gulf countries, uh, we had a very difficult situation. One time, uh, the, between the uh, devotees, there is a difference of opinion and some uh, kind of disturbance started. So um, I begged uh, the help from His Holiness uh, Bhakti Purushan Swami Maharaj. So he said that, uh, you do one thing, you stop going, find new people to preach. And it was a very, very difficult task, how to do and how to find new people. So we do not know anybody and where to approach in the Muslim area. So it was a very difficult task. So that time we don't have any other option than praying to Lord. So we just pray, go Nittai. So please, we want association. We want uh, some kind of devotees, so please help us. So uh, I do not know how to whom I should approach. So uh, in that situation, a few uh, one uh, near about one week passed in that stress condition, and all of a sudden, one uh, non devotee, he was just Google uh, like Krishna devotees something like that. So he got anyhow, some other, he got my contact number, but he was a non-devotee. So finally, we are praying continuously, the how to preach, there is no Sangha. So within next week, couple of weeks, one devotee arrived. So <laughs> initiated devotee arrived. So with, and he contacted us. So this is the way, one non-devotee and one, one initiated devotee. When we come together, that the non-devotee, he invited many non new people, like non-devotees, which we are looking for. So, <laughs> with the help of the devotee and non-devotees, then gradually, and uh, Lord listened our prayer, and uh, very in a, within less than a year, it reached to 300. Ooh. So, it was a reciprocation with uh, uh, their Lord Sip God. Wonderful. Thank Amazing, 300, huh? <laughs> oh, Krishna. Wonderful, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Very nice. Okay, let's see here. We'll go ahead. All right, here's a... Okay, from Third Canto, Chapter 18, Text Number 7. When the Lord was coming out of the water, 
taking the earth in his arms to deliver it, the demon derided him with insulting words. But the Lord did not care because he was very conscious of his duty. For a dutiful man there is nothing to fear. Similarly, those who are powerful have no fear of derision or unkind words from an enemy. The Lord had nothing to fear from anyone, yet he was merciful to his enemy by neglecting him. Although apparently he fled from the challenge, it was just to protect the earth from calamity that he tolerated Haranyaksha's deriding words. Okay, so we have to learn to be tolerant and indifferent to these harsh remarks sometimes. We shouldn't be too sensitive. Let's see. Oh. Brahma is described in this verse as Swarat. Actually, full independence is exclusive to the Lord Himself, but as part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, every living entity has a minute quantity of independence. Each and every one of the living entities within this universe has this minute independence, but Brahma, being the chief of all living entities, has a greater potential of independence than any other. He is the representative of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and has been assigned to preside over universal affairs. All other demigods work for him. Therefore, he is described here as Swarat. Okay. So we may think only Krishna is Swarat. Generally, we see that in first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Janmajyasya yato navayat etaritas chartesyu abhigyana swarat. Abhigyana swarat, right? The qualities of the Lord. He's, but here we see Brahma is also swarat because he's representing the Lord. So on behalf of the Lord he has that independence. Okay, going ahead, text 24. Someone else read? The demon's attempt to measure the Supreme Personality of God is significant. The demon wanted to embrace him with his arm, thinking that with his limited arm, he could capture the absolute vice material power. He did not know that the God is the greatest of the great and smallest of the small. No one can capture the Supreme Lord or bring him under his control. But the demoniac person always attempts to measure the length and breadth of the Supreme Lord. By his inconceivable potency of the Lord, uh, potency, the Lord can become the universal form. As explained in Bhagavad Gita, and it, at the same time, he can remain with, it, within the box of his devotee as they worship the beast. Yeah, some devotees, they have a shalagram shila or something, or small deity, and they may keep the, the shila or the little deity in a, a little box or a little bag. They may keep it around the neck, something like that. And so the Lord has that potency that he can be so small, but at the same time he's so great. He's the universal form also. And so this is the inconceivable potency of the Lord. So when Haranyaksha tried to embrace the Lord, it was, <laughs> there was nothing for the Lord to be outside of his embrace. He doesn't want to be embraced by the demon. He doesn't want to be touched by the demons. He wants to, he would enjoy, enjoy the embrace of the devotee, but not the demon. So that's the difference there. Krishna takes pleasure in being with the devotees. Go ahead, Maharaji, a little more here. There are many devotees who keep a statue of the Lord in a small box and carry it with them everywhere. Every morning they worship the Lord in the box. The Supreme Lord, Keshava, or the personality of God at Krishna, is not bound by any measurement of our calculation. He can remain within, with his devotee in any suitable form, 
yet he is unapproachable by any amount of demoniac activity. Right. The, the demons cannot approach him. So, in the Brihad Bhagavatam it begins like that, that Narada Muni was looking for a person who had received the greatest mercy from the Lord, and it began with a Brahmana who came there, he came at the Prayag, and at Prayag, and he was worshipping his Shaligram Shila, and then he was distributing prasadam to everyone. And Narada Muni declared him to be the greatest devotee of the Lord. But the Brahmana said, no, no, not me. He said, you should go to this king. <laughs> Brahmana was very humble. Devotee never thinks he's the greatest. Devotees are always humble. But the demons, they're always so proud. They're so arrogant. They think they're so great. Just like this demon Haranyaksha. He wants to embrace. He thinks he's so powerful he can embrace, take the Lord in his embrace and crush him. But it's, it's just a game. Lord Krishna is enjoying the fun. It's the drama. They're having a good fight and Krishna is enjoying himself. Okay. A little more here. Someone can read. Mataji? Another Mataji? Yes, Mataji. Yoga practice is not intended to keep the body fit and young. Such advertisements of so-called yoga are not approved by any standard method. Particularly mentioned in this verse is the word young or unto whom, indicating that meditation should be targeted on the personality of Godhead. Even if one concentrates his mind on the bore form of the Lord, that is also yoga. As confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, one who concentrates his mind constantly in meditation upon the personality of Godhead in one of his many varieties of forms is a first class yogi. And he can very easily attain trance simply by meditating upon the form of the Lord. If one is able to continue such meditation on the Lord's form at the time of one's death, one is liberated from this mortal body and is transferred to the kingdom of God. Okay. So Prabhupada is enlightening us. What is actually yoga? It's to fix our mind on the form of the Lord. And so even the form of the boar, we can fix our mind on the form of the boar. And we remember, although it's a boar, that the, the Lord is always attractive. Even in the form of a boar, he's attractive. The devotee is always pleased to see the form of the Lord. So the first class yogi, he's always meditating in this way, on the, the form of the Lord. And if we can do that at the time of death, then that is the goal of life, that is success. The Lord, worship of Lord Varaha is very popular, and it used to be more popular. South India, very popular. Still today, many people worship Lord Varaha. Very popular. Okay, so here's a, a little exercise you can think about now. Maybe you can keep the same pairs, right? You have pairs? You could do, continue. What are the various steps we can take to increase remembrance of the Lord? And what are the challenges that we face in applying the above steps? So we were talking about remembering the Lord, Lord Varaha, meditating on the form of the Lord. So what do we need to do? How can we increase this remembrance? You understand? And what's the difficulty? So we go ahead, go back into the pairs. Maybe I don't. Doesn't matter if you have a different partner again. Doesn't. If you want, you can change the partner. Yeah, Marty, it doesn't seem like it's possible. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think it's not possible. I think you have to change the partner. So it's okay. But every, you know, just make it pairs, and and then uh, we'll give you like uh, seven seven minutes or eight minutes. So 
yeah, just bear with me. Let me just exchange you for them. Okay. Hare Krishna Prabhu. My obeisances, all glories to Prabhupada. So, how are we going to remember the Lord? What is your plan? I think by Maharaj, by hearing the pastimes of the Lord from Srimad Bhagavatam. Hearing the pastimes of the Lord, okay. How often are we going to hear them? Every day, Maharaj, for at least one hour. Every day? Hmm. Are, you, are you particularly attracted to the worship of any particular form of the Lord? Uh, uh, I am not involved in Didi worship, Maharaj. <laughs> are you second initiated? No, my husband. No. And you're not, so you're not doing any deity worship. You don't have any deity at home. No, my husband. I met you that evening, Maharaj, two, three days back in MI campus. Oh, yeah? You met me here at MI? Yes, my husband. Where are you now? I came to Puri, my husband. Oh, you're in Puri now. <coughs> You were, you're in Puri, is it with your wife, is it? Sorry? No, very noisy. I don't know what's going on. Okay, I, I, I met you at MI, right? You were you came with your wife? No, Maharaj, no. I came to see Shubham Maharaj. Oh, you came to see. In the so evening, you were. Oh, that time. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, they want me to go back. I have to go back to the main room. You've got other people to talk to. Yes, my Yes, Guru. Uh, you can share your points, Prabhu. I think Maharaj is still Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, I'm sorry. Um, Do you want to go and join yeah. the group? Um, I think, let me just see. Yeah, unfortunately, two devotees. Uh, and then Krishna Prabhu as well. There was another devotee who didn't join a group, so the groups got a bit mixed around, so I had to move a few people. <laughs> I think it's all done now. It's all done now, yeah? I think it's all done, yeah. I'll, I, I'm happy to join one group now as well. Um, unless you you want to mention anything? Me? Mention it? No. Okay, so no, fine. It, okay. It, it's certainly good. You go in a group. Okay, I, enjoy, I enjoy it. I'll also go to another group.
Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. 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 So, who are you trying to remember? Maharaj, we were discussing. Uh, there are uh, two ways of, uh, like I told one way and Mataji told one way of remembering Krishna. That uh, one of the way Mataji said this whenever we do our household work or whatever activities, when we hear lectures continuously or we sing, uh, hear bhajans. Uh, sung by devotees like that we can remember Krishna that is one of the ways and another way I told this in the 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita Lord Krishna says that uh, among the water bodies and the ocean so like that whenever we go to our ocean beach or something whenever we see the ocean we can think that Lord Krishna says he is the ocean among the water bodies like that seeing that all the verses in the 10th chapter like how we can relate Panity and uh, words and alphabet A, like that whatever we see, we can think about Krishna. That is one small way. And the challenges which we face is that, first of all, the challenge is commitment. So when we, when we think that, okay, I'm going to listen to lecture every day, but sometimes because of some uh, busy, uh, some, some other work, we try to uh, postpone and then there is no commitment in that. Like that, uh, we try to... Uh, it goes away from our routine and we that one of the challenges which we face, which we can uh, avoid it by associating with devotees and guidance from senior devotees. Like that we can try to uh, stick to our commitments. And uh, another challenge is that whenever we see anything, first we what we think is it is for our sense gratification. So we should start thinking like how I can offer that to Krishna. So instead of that, we think that I'm going to enjoy. So that is one of the things. Uh, we are not able to remember Krishna. That is what my. Which particular form of the Lord are you trying to remember? Okay. Well, I remember Lord Krishna playing his flute of uh, Radha Shyam Sundar in his Kandandavan and uh, like that. Oh, okay. Radha Shyam. Radha Shyam. Okay. Very nice. So you can meditate on the gopis and their service to Krishna. Okay. And what about your friend? What, Revati, is it? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah, um, definitely um, the many deities that come to my mind when I think but uh, here where I live uh, in Philadelphia, uh, in US, uh, uh, we have a deity named uh, Shri Shri Radha Sharad Bihari. So um, they're very dear to me. Like I, I, whenever I think they come to my mind and, and Vrindavan and Mayapur deities also. So they, those three come to my mind whenever I think of uh, meditating. Okay. And how, what are the obstacles sent to your meditation? In meditation, obstacles, uh, I would say uh, my own, uh, my own uh, shortcomings, my own shortcomings. Um, sometimes, like, uh, like I, 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 uh, I get overwhelmed with my work and my other uh, material problems, and that disturbs me in my meditation that's the main thing i would say my own uh, uh, physical problems uh, that disturbs me in my devotional service have you got any my, have you got any yes. alternative to how to overcome these obstacles uh the to overcome the obstacles i would say the only thing i do is pray to krishna pray other to than krishna. that i don't pray yeah, yeah. I, I just thought, Krishna, please help me. Just pray like that. Krishna, please yeah. help me. Yeah, because uh, I, I, even if I tell my family members, yeah, they can sympathize, like they can say some few nice words, but ultimately Krishna can only help. Okay. So do you pray regularly to Krishna? Do you have a lot of problems? Do you pray to Krishna? Yeah, I try to pray to Krishna every day, like, uh, because something or other is going on. So I try to pray to Krishna, please help me, uh, so that I can, uh, the one more, the one big fear I always have is like, uh, I want to continue like what I'm doing, like my devotional service. Uh, 
as uh, and increase it so because i don't want because of some other problem it should stop okay so you pray to krishna all right recording in progress okay is our time up yeah, yeah. seven minutes okay who would like to share with us your discussion somebody maybe who never spoke before yes ananda krishna prabhu yes me yes yeah, we were discussing, um, of course, the main points of our sadhana, like deity worship. Mataji was mentioning deity worship helps a lot to remember Krishna. And then, of course, uh, Bhagavatam and the Holy Name. So this is, of course, the standard how to think about Krishna. And the challenge uh, I brought up was, and she mentioned also the Sangha with devotees, association with devotees. And then I brought up the challenge that sometimes we come together with devotees and the social aspect is dominating and we are not really doing you know, meditation about Krishna together, discussion of the Bhagavatam, but many, many other topics we discuss, mundane topics we discuss, maybe sometimes even some you know, Pracharpa and gossiping about other devotees and then it's difficult to turn the whole environment, how to do that. And if you do that, then you might be the one who is the one who always knows it better. So it might not be accepted. So, and then she also said, this is maybe also a problem for those who are not coming so often together with devotees who are working and have only on the weekend Sangha. Um, and then we were discussing the, um, the privilege of not having to work because she was not working, I'm also not working, so we can use our time only for, for Krishna. And um, this is the privilege that we can think then in any situation about Krishna, and then we can um, uh, plan our day in, according to our spiritual sadhana, and um, that we can think all, always about Krishna. So this was, there were some, these were some points. You're working for Krishna, of course, every day, right? Yeah, some work is, I think, more direct and some is more indirect. Mine personally is very direct, so... Yeah, if you're li living in a, in a temple or in an ashram, then... Okay. Yeah, I'm very most connected to a, um, to Simhacharam in, in Germany. Uh -huh. I'm living where I'm integrated in the community and in the preaching and in all that. And personally, I have a online preaching and teaching, which also maintains my family. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Yeah, so you're I'm always busy. Keep yourself engaged, eh? Yeah, I have a, I have a YouTube channel. I have an online group. I have an online shop where I sell Robert's books. I discuss only about Krishna and Krishna conscious topics. And uh, I just read books online like this. Most of it, your preaching is done in German or in English? Yeah. Yeah, uh, mainly in German. I have a bigger ch uh, channel in German. I have a small channel in English, but mainly in German. Mainly German. Yeah, you have a, a good congregation in Germany then. A lot of people interested. Yeah, yeah. And, and some or other, uh, over the years, I accumulated some following online who like Krishna and like how I can present Krishna and they, they maintain me, so to say. I have like an online group. And a club, like an online club. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. So you have a natural remembrance of Krishna. Your whole life yeah. is just centered on Krishna, your whole engagement, yeah. So certainly true. If you're in that situation, then it's a, quite a bit easier to remember Krishna. But of course, yeah. but that, that, we can take it for granted sometimes, you know, we're in that situation. That sometimes you, we're put into more stressing situations, maybe some crisis or something, maybe economically or politically or something, life-threatening situation, where naturally we'll want to remember Krishna more, or yeah. intensify our memories. Uh, yeah. Right now I'm happy as it is, so I was not in intense situations. Okay, very good. All right, somebody else? 
Asim Krishna Prabhu, you're going to tell us? Yes, Maharaj. Yes. Uh, just by I, I I gave I gave one point that by being proper schedule and sadhana in our daily life, then still to remember Krishna, and we can also maintain mode of goodness like that. And by maintaining mode of goodness, we can easily remember Krishna, like uh, making making proper schedule of hearing and uh, also chanting, and then rest of the time engaging in our our own work on seva. And we should not waste our time idly in gossipy and things like that. So, uh, do you have a full time job or are you full time devotee? Maharaj, I am full time devotee till now. You're full time devotee, yeah. You don't have full any. Time. You're not working. Yes. No, Maharaj. How do you maintain yourself? That's a nice question, Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no? uh, of course, through uh, Maharaj, yes. My parents are having nice business, so my parents, my father is helping me. Oh, okay. And, Your father has uh, a business. Okay. Family business. <laughs> yes, okay. It makes it a bit easier for you. Are they also devotees? Father? Devotee? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Oh. Father initiated? No, Maharaj. But, but favorable, very favorable. Chanting 16 rounds. Chanting? Both my parents. Oh, both yes. your parents chant 16 rounds. Yes, Maharaj. Oh, wonderful. Okay, very nice situation. <laughs> yeah. So, not too much problems there. All right, let's hear somebody else. Yeah, Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Can I say, Maharaj, Govindar Das? Yes, okay, Prabhu, yeah. Okay, Maharaj, actually, we are you with Pena, Pena, uh, Pena Irana Prabhu, we are the set out the feelings. A 16 round chanting I am performing in one installment in the morning because I have to leave for office by 10 a.m. I am working as district and session judge in the state of Purisha. So I have to dictate many judgments, sports, sense of books, by by special practices. And I am promising to at least read Bhagavatam every day two hours in shock. And I am, I am becoming in successful in achieving the same, but I am promising to to complete two hours reading every day Bhagavatam, but by by, by so I am preaching a group. To some intellectuals in the in the in, in a national group, that means some engineers, doctors, some professors, or at least some doctors. I am just I am organizing, preaching in English, and uh, so that is going on. They are receiving and they are also uh, reciprocating accordingly. That is going on. So because of their strength and support, I am becoming inspired, and I am uh, yes I am doing. Initially, I had started preaching in Malkanagiri while I was working as a civil, senior civil judge. There, a person, his name is Sujya uh, Prabhu, he just donated a land, a piece of land that is around now more than one crore. And we had already constructed a preaching center there. Now preaching is going on in Malkanagiri. That is attached to one of the centers uh, for ISKCON, that is a Burla ISKCON center. So that is, that is going on still. And my preaching after my transfer to another place, now I'm preaching online because so that is the corona consciousness period is going on. So by the way, preaching is going and I'm promising to increase my devotional practices so that I can easily remember Krishna and I will not forget. That plans are formulated that is going on. Oh, very nice. Okay. So every day try to read two hours Bhagavatam. Huh? Wonderful. I'm chanting 16 rounds also, huh? Is your family also devotees? Numerous, my wife is now chanting. She is, uh, she is aspiring to be initiated uh, in a short time. And my children, they are doing two to three rounds. One daughter, one son. Okay. 
very good. So you're you're doing well. Krishna is helping you. They help you to remember Krishna. Are you able to preach in the in the court? When you go to court, are you able to give Krishna? Yeah, because of because of restrictions and our ethical uh, yeah, your prohibitions, we are not uh, supposed to teach in the court. So that's why online classes I'm secretly I am presenting, and uh, because I will not be public. Right. And uh, if you, yeah. Right. If any com if any complaint will be made against me, then right, it would not be good. Right. My life will be completely destroyed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Anybody else like to share with us how they remember Krishna? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hello, Pranam. Yes. So, if you allow me that. Uh, with Apurva uh, Nilachal Mataji, we discussed uh, uh, how to remember, in increase remembrance Krishna. So we dis come across three points. The first point is that uh, uh, devotee association. But the hurdle is that nowadays when there is a devotee association, the mostly uh, we dis the devotees discussed uh, the, all Krishna Katha, like material gossiping. So, we know theoretically devotee association is to remember Krishna. Krishna. So, when uh, devotee association, little Krishna Katha are mostly all Krishna Katha and the material gossiping. So, the, we discussed the answer how to overcome. The answer is to associate with devotees, those who are more sincere and serious. Then we can uh, get remembrance. This is one point. Another point is that uh, we remember Krishna by reading Prabhupada's books without fail. Yes. So, so when we read Prabhupada's books, we also lose taste uh, alone. So sometimes uh, uh, we due to material uh, material works, we forget to read uh, Srila Prabhupada's books. So then. Uh, Theoretically, it is pro remember, remembrance Krishna by reading Prabhupada books, but it's not happening. So then answer, how to overcome this one? So it is to better to read with uh, uh, senior problem, but uh, when I associate with the uh, uh, like Maharaj, they are doing Gita Murta class every morning, every day morning. So associating in that class and reading, and Maharaj is giving some extra duty. How do you understand? You make a chart or prepare. So that will also giving me opportunity to read more and more, and the full day engrossed with this uh, Krishna consciousness and writing. So alone reading is not good. Reading with Vaishnavas is the solution. Okay. So then uh, another uh, thing is that third point we discussed, like uh, uh, forgetting, like uh, most of times, uh, uh, this is actually from my wife, huh? so he, she put that with more material association, then this is the problem of uh, uh, like how to, uh, how to remember Krishna all the day, because busy with uh, many other works, so the answer we come across that uh, the quality chanting in the morning which will give us positive uh, and uh, energetic uh, spiritual uh, in sattvic mood so that we can able to remember Krishna. So these three points we discussed Maharaj. Mm, very nice. Okay. Quality chanting in the morning. Yes, very nice. And then also? So answer, answer all this. Yamaraj. Yes. So quality chanting in the morning and association, reading the books, reading the book more better than reading the book is discussing the books and explaining what you read. If you can, uh, you know, not just only reading, 
but discussing and explaining, understanding what you read. That's also very good. As you say, better than just trying to read alone. Reading alone is okay, but of course it's better if you can discuss with others and explain. Okay, thank you very much, Prabhu. Maharaj, if you allow me, uh, one question is there, practical question. Yes. The question actually is uh, for my wife, good wife, she's sitting with me. So the, the problem is uh, uh, the, she is very helping nature because of her helping nature. Many devotees ask help. So she's busy with uh, like a full day, little work, homework and uh, more busy with the helping nature. So this is uh, spoiling uh, remembrance of Krishna. And uh, there is uh, other problems like family problems are also there. And uh, for a devotee, they are, when they are asking something, she cannot refuse. So she is telling how to refuse. Devotee Bhakata Seva is Parama Siddhi. So that means uh, I have to go for that. But if you remember, do not remember, but she is asking the question how I can remember. This is the practical problem. What's the solution, Maharaj? Please. Uh, Advice. Well, devotees are coming for help. That she should help them by reminding them about Krishna. <laughs> she wants to help the devotees, right? She should help them remember Krishna. That's uh, I, that's what. Uh, that's, that's not. Huh? But Maharaj, that is not happening. So, so in his, he's helping. He's going in the material. Well, that's not helping. That's not helping. If it's going in the material, she's not helping her, she's not helping them either. She has to help, know how to help. So real help is to help someone remember Krishna. And if you just listen to their material problems, that's not going to help them. Not helping you is not helping them. So you try and help them remember Krishna. This is difficult, of course. Ladies, you know, they like to talk. <laughs> Ladies, they enjoy talking with each other. So Maharaj always says that it's a, need to be balanced. So in, name, in the name of balance, she slipped away from uh, remembrance. Anyway, this is the problem. I have to remember Krishna. Whatever that comes up in the course of conversation, bring it back to Krishna. Keep the focus on Krishna. With the family, with the friends, whoever they are, try to keep it Krishna conscious. Keep Krishna there in the center. So, regular kirtan, do kirtan at home with the family. That's very good. Every day have some kirtan. Don't just talk. Do kirtan. That's very nice. Keep their home like the spiritual world, by the chanting of the holy name. Right? Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, Yedina grehe bhajana deke grehe te goloka bhaya. Bhaktivinoda Thakur is in his home, he's, he's not just, he's not talking with his, he's just, they're worshipping the deity. So their home is like the spiritual world. And so you, like that, family life is very good if you're Krishna conscious. So keep everybody busy in the service of Krishna. Cooking for Krishna. Decorating Krishna. It's a real business of devotees. Right? Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, Maharaj, even if we are uh, engaged in uh, Krishna conscious activities the whole day, like why Krishna's mercy, even if we are uh, engaged in such activities, but still sometimes I feel like it is mechanical, like I'm remembering Krishna, 
but how to develop that attachment towards Krishna? We are remembering Krishna, but I feel that it is mechanical, we are just remembering. How to develop the relationship with Lord Krishna? Well, you have to talk to Krishna. You have to talk to Krishna, you have to tell him what you're thinking, what you're trying to do. You have to develop your relationship with Krishna. So it's not just praying to him when you're in difficulty, but you have to, you have to think of Krishna you know, like your friend. Or, you know, in some way think of Krishna either as your friend or as a, as a lover or as a, as a child. Yeah. But you have to cultivate some kind of relationship with Krishna. So chanting the holy name and singing the songs about Krishna, singing bhajans, Krishna bhajans, all of these things will help you. And do you worship deities? Do you do deity worship? Yes, Maharaj. Who do you worship? We have deities of God, Nita, Jagannath, Padre, Subhadra and Latubu. Okay, very good. So, who does the puja? You or your husband? Uh, actually, I'm not uh, married. I'm my parent. Oh. Um, I do Abhishek every day. You do Abhishek uh, every day? Yes, my daughter. My mother does, and I dress them up. Oh, wonderful. Okay. That to Gopal, I'm uh, doing Abhishek since childhood every day. Oh, very nice. So, Krishna is your child. So, you, you talk to him, keep a relationship with him. Okay, Maharaj. Okay, Hare Krishna. Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Okay, we'll go back to our slideshow here. Okay. All right. This is text number 32 from chapter 19. Here the sage Maitreya admits that he explained the incident of the killing of Haranyaksha by the Supreme Personality of Godhead as a straight narration. He did not manufacture anything or add interpretation, but explained whatever he had heard from his spiritual master. Thus he accepted as bona fide the system of parampara, or receiving the transcendental message in disciplic succession. Unless received by this bona fide process of hearing from a spiritual master, the statement of an acharya or preceptor cannot be valid. All right, so Maitreya admits he's heard everything. All right, there's a bit more. Someone could read this one? Oh, yeah. One becomes an authority simply by presenting whatever he has heard from his spiritual master. And one who does not accept a bona fide spiritual master cannot be an authority. This is clearly explained here. If one wants to have transcendental pleasure, he must find a person with authority. It is also stated in the Bhagavatam that simply by hearing from an authority, uh, authoritative source with the ear and the heart, one can release the pastimes of the Lord, otherwise it is not possible. Sanatana Goswami therefore has especially warned uh, that one should not hear anything about the personality of, personality of the Lord from the lips of a non-devotee. Non-devotees are considered to be like serpents. As, a, as milk is poisoned by a serpent's touch, so, although the narration of the pastimes of the Lord is as pure as milk, when administrated by serpent-like non-devotees, it becomes poisonous. Not only does it have no effect in transcendental pleasure, but it is dangerous also. Okay. So, the importance of hearing from the proper source, hearing through parampara, otherwise the effect is very dangerous, just like milk. It becomes poisonous, it becomes dangerous. So hearing, if people hear, and, and unfortunately a lot of people do hear from the wrong sources, 
they become very influenced, they hear so many bad things, they hear so many wrong things about Lord Krishna and his pastimes, about the Lord's incarnations. So it's very important to be connected to the parampara and get everything from the proper source. Text 36, what grateful soul is there who would not render his loving service to such a great master as the personality of Godhead? The Lord can be easily pleased by spotless devotees who resort exclusively to him for protection, though the unrighteous man finds it difficult to propitiate him. So the devotees, they take pleasure in glorifying the Lord. But these unrighteous people, they're just the opposite. They don't, they only want to hear their own glories. They like to be, hear about their own self. They glorify themselves. They don't like to hear about the Lord. They don't like to hear about devotees. They just want to hear their own glories. So this is the difference, the devotees and the demons. Yes, someone can read this one. Every living entity, especially persons in the human race, must feel grateful for the benedictions offered by the grace of the Supreme Lord. Anyone, therefore, with a simple heart of gratefulness must be Krishna consciousness and offer devotional service to the Lord. Those who are actually thieves and those do not recognize or acknowledge the benedictions offered to them by the Supreme Lord, and they cannot render him devotional service. So what kind of benedictions do we get from the Lord? If we're actually hearing and doing devotional service, what is the benedictions which the Lord is going to give us? We can come out from the fear, material fear. Come out from fear. We can give up fear. Fear, lamentation, hankerings. Okay. Or we can give up even material desires. But sometimes we hear, you know, I think even in this section it's described by hearing about Lord Varaha, you can get all kinds of opulence and you can fulfill all our material needs. And so are these benedictions also offered to devotees? Yes, Maharaj. Yes? Can you explain? The Lord's giving material benedictions to devotees? Yes, Maharaj. So we hear Shri, we hear Shri Yes? Yeah? Go ahead. Yes, Maharaj. In the case of Dhruva Maharaj, although he, although he was verified by seeing the Lord, but he had earlier had a desire to get a kingdom greater than that of his father, and the Lord gave him that kingdom, he gave him the Dhruva Loka. Also, Maharaj, in Krishna book, we hear the story of Sudama Brahmin, uh, who, who actually didn't want all those opulences, but his wife had a desire, so the Lord fulfilled all those desires and gave him a very nice pass. Okay, so we can approach the Lord, we can study Srimad Bhagavatam, and we can fulfill all of our material desires. The purpose of reading, studying Bhagavatam should not be for that purpose, but it's like a byproduct of bhakti. Yes, it's a byproduct of what's the real product then? People love for Krishna. Okay. And if Krishna gives us, if Krishna gives us a lot of material benedictions, also, what should we do? Should we accept them? He can accept and utilize in the service of Krishna. Okay, how are you going to do that? Krishna gives you a lot of money. What are you going to do? Uh, 
Um, Rupa Goswami generally you know, he mentioned like how our um, even uh, our um, economy like how how much we are earning in that fifty percentage. Uh, so we have to dedicate for uh, serving the devotees. Well, that and, uh, that was when he retired. We have mm -hmm. to do, do you, are you going to do that now before you even retire? Well, you still have a young family. Yeah, Maharaj, now also like we can, uh, uh, we can open, uh, at least uh, I'm not sure like how much depends on how Krishna is giving how much money. So if we have uh, uh, whatever the money that Krishna is going to give, so we can open a small preaching center and um, engage to bring many people as a I'm wondering if Krishna gives you many children, you have a lot of children to take care of, you know. How do you, how do you deal with that? Won't you get so attached to your children, you have no time for preaching? Um, no, Maharaj, actually for, uh, for me, uh, I would say like uh, uh, bringing children is also one of the duty of uh, Grahastha uh, in a Krishna conscious way. And, uh, and of course, like when we uh, do the preaching, uh, Personally, I can say like uh, when I uh, when I personally do the preaching, my son also hears and uh, he also uh, sometimes he gives some points. Suppose when I miss some points in the class, so he also gives some points. So in that way, like they also get motivated. So it helps both ways. So they also become devotees. Yes, my Lord. All of your children, your children, they have no problem with Krishna consciousness. They're, they're favorable. Yes, Mother, I have one uh, child. He is about 11 years old. And he's a devotee. Yeah. He's trying. He's chanting. He's trying to be a devotee. Yeah. You know, sometimes parents, you know, um, um, you know, sometimes the parents have difficulties with their children, you know, like, if the parents come into Krishna consciousness after the birth of the child, you know, maybe they brought the child up for some time and the child's used to things which are non-devotional and then the parents suddenly become devotees, then it's difficult for the children to accept because, you know, they want to go back to the old, you know, well, I want to watch television, we want, to, I want to see television and I want, you know, sometimes you, you know, young children, they become addicted to non-vegetarian food and they want non-vegetarian non food. The parents want to become vegetarian, but the children still want to eat non-vegetarian. That's a problem. So these kind of problems are there sometimes. It's very good if you can have your, you know, you bring your children up in Krishna consciousness from the beginning of their life. Otherwise, it's very difficult. <coughs> Okay, text 37, translation. O Brahmanas, anyone who hears, chants, or takes pleasure in the wonderful narration of the killing of the Haranyaksha demon by the Lord, who appeared as the firstborn in order to deliver the world, is at once relieved of the results of sinful activities, even the killing of a Brahmana. Well, we hear that also about circ circumambulating Tosi Maharani, right? Yani kani chapapani brahmahatya de kani cha. That simply by circumambulating Tosi, we can relieve ourselves from sinful, from the killing of a brahmana. So here also we're we're told, the Lord. Who, the Lord. Yes. This is not written on. No problem. I can offer. So we're hearing the Lord Haranyaksha appeared as the, the first boar, the original boar, right? Sukara, Adi Sukara, Adi Sukara, then Sukara Rupa, right? The boar incarnation. So he's the original boar and he appears to deliver the world and simply by hearing about that these pastimes of the Lord, we can destroy all of our sinful activities. Of course, it, everything depends on the quality in which we, we do things. 
just like in hearing about this pastimes of the Lord, there's qualities in it. There's qualities in the chanting of the holy name. And similarly, there's qualities in how we hear, and how we chant, and how we take pleasure in this narration of the Haranyaksha demon, killing the Haranyaksha demon. So we, ideally the, the quality should be there, the quality of devotion, pure devotion. It shouldn't be mixed devotion. If we're simply, if we're simply hearing about the glories of the Lord for the sake of getting rid of our sinful activities, then that's not very good. That's not the real purpose. But still, one would get purified, even if they do that. If you simply hear like that. Even though you have some material desires, you'll get benefit. All right, someone can read this one. Since the personality of God is in the absolute position, there is no difference between his pastimes and his personality. Anyone who hears about the pastimes of the Lord associates with the Lord directly. And one who associates directly with the Lord is certainly freed from all sinful activities, even to the extent of the killing of a Brahmana, which is considered the most sinful activity in the material world. One should be very eager to hear about the activities of the Lord from the bona fide source, the pure devotee. If one simply gives oral reception to the narration and accepts the glories of the Lord, then he is qualified. All right, so Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada explains to us the process of this purification. He explains that hearing about the pastimes of the Lord is not different from directly associating with the Lord. If we, had, if we hear very carefully, we hear very, we should hear with eagerness and submissively and attentively. And if, if we hear in the proper manner, then there's no difference between hearing about the Lord and directly associating with the Lord. And of course, if we associate directly with the Lord, then certainly we'll be freed from all of our sinful activities. We'll be purified. So giving oral reception, that's, that's the important thing. Hearing very carefully, then we can get the, the greatest benefit. In the third canto, Lord Kapila Dev also describes you have to hear for a long time to get the greatest benefit. Okay, text 38, someone read. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Devotees are generally attracted by narratives of pastimes of the Lord. And even though they do not prosecute austerities or meditation, this very process of hearing attentively about the pastimes of the Lord will endow them with innumerable benefits such as wealth, fame, longevity, and other desirable aims of life. If one continues to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, which is full of narratives of the pastimes of the Lord, at the end of the life, one is sure to be transferred to the eternal transcendental abode of the Lord. Thus, here is somebody fitted both ultimately and for as long as they are in the material world. This is the supreme, sublime result of engaging in devotional service. The beginning of devotional service is to spare some time to listen to Bhagavatam from the right source. Papa all right, so someone, uh, the benefits are given here, right? Longevity, we well, want to live a long life, or fame, you want to be famous. <laughs> I remember we had one, we had one lady actually, she came to stay in, uh, she stayed with the in, the in the guest house in the temple, and she met one of the 
very prominent spiritual teachers in our society and she begged him, please, please bless me that I can become famous. <laughs> that was her desire. She actually spoke like that. Please bless me that I will be famous. She was an actress and so she'd been in some Bollywood movies and she begged him like that. Please bless me that I can become famous. So here we can see, you know, uh, of course, the teacher, he didn't tell her like that. He didn't tell her to read Srimad Bhagavatam. But if she'd done it, if she'd spent more time to hear about the glories of the Lord, she, she might have been, she might have became, become more famous and achieved other desirable aims of life as well. So many things we want in life, you know, people want, you know, not only fame and money, long life, though those things are very important, but we like also position in society and we want education, we should be successful in our education and so many th goals we have. So you can get everything from worship of Krishna, right? The second canto Srimad Bhagavatam says, who knows the verse? That Krishna can fulfill all your material desires. What's the verse? Yes. Yes, right, good, yes. So simply worship Krishna and you'll get all your desires. So here it's saying, that through the process of attentively hearing the pastimes of the Lord, you can get it. But a devotee will not aspire for these things. That is the point. Even though the devotee may be given these things, he doesn't desire them. Just like, as you said, uh, uh, Sridham, Sudama, Sudama Brahman went to Dwarka to meet Lord Krishna. He didn't desire anything, but Krishna gave him everything. He didn't actually desire it, but Krishna arranged to give everything to him. And so the devotee also, the devotee doesn't have material desires. But Krishna arranges, if the devotee likes anything or needs anything, Krishna will arrange it. He will provide for him. And then this beautiful sentence at the end here, the beginning of devotional service, to spare some time and listen to Srimad Bhagavatam from the right source. So reading Srila Prabhupada Srimad Bhagavatam, you're sure you're getting it from the right source, right? Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Are there any questions? Anybody has any questions? Maharaj. Yes? Maharaj, in this uh, last word, this uh, yeah. Saunaka Muni is uh, spoken as Anga. Uh, I didn't understand Maharaj. Why is, is Anga? Anga. That's in, where, where is it? In the... Uh, in the last verse, Narayano Ante Gatir Anga Sunantam. This is text number, chapter 19. Chapter 19, text number 38. Okay, thirty eight. Anga, huh? Anga, oh dear Shonaka. Can you say something in this? Anga. Anga means like, like limb, right? A part. Yeah. 
Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu, do you want to say something? Uh, yes, Maharaj, I said I wanted to say the same thing as what you said. It is out of law that he addressed uh, Sonoga Zonga. In various uh, contexts, we see that this Zonga word is used. So, out of the uh, love of uh, um, that uh, person, he speaks, uh, addresses him as Zonga. Out of love for that person. Yes. Anga, yes, anga meaning a part of the Lord, is it? Part, part of the body. Body is Anga. Part of the body. Yeah. Which body is, are we talking about? He's a part of yeah. the, the Lord's body or part of the body of the, no, uh, the our nine? Body, our body. Just like our body, that uh, Sanskrit word is called Anga. In Odia uh, language also it is called Anga. Anga means our body is for limbs, they are called Anga. So when uh, we out of love, we address this uh, as Anga. In several places we see this word is used, Anga. Uh -huh. It's simply yes, ind Maharaj. indicating a loving relationship, is it? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, Prabhu. Thank you. So, the, in Aurya language, they have that custom also, is it? Uh, uh, this uh, meaning of uh, the Sangha is in Odia is a part of our uh, body, limb. Uh -huh. uh, in Odia, this is also Odia. <laughs> Sanskrit is the, this is also Sanskrit word. And uh, the meaning is that uh, part of our body, Sangha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, thank you, Prabhu. Yes. Yes, Maharaji. Somebody else had a question? Wait, Mat Mataji is first. Mataji was going to ask something. Let Mataji come first here. We're Mother Mataji asked a question. Oh, really? Yeah. Guru Mataji, you can ask a question. My question was actually uh, in the 17th chapter, it is said that how uh, Saranyaksha approached uh, uh, Varuna and then he told Varuna to, for fight, and Varuna told to go to Supreme Personality of God, Varaha. So Varaha, they appeared before this uh, Saranyaksha. Haranyaksha was searching and he went right through, he was searching for years, it says, and he was searching in the bottom and then eventually he came to Varuna and he found the kingdom of Varuna, who is the god of the, wa of the water. And so he challenged him to fight at that time. So, uh, like, he, like how Varuna, he told to go to Supreme Personality of God so, yeah, he, he told, told him Lord Vishnu, yeah. Uh, in the proper, like in the translation, in the written, Supreme Personality of Godhead as Varaha. Okay. So, uh, so means Varaha, they would appear before the Hiranyaksha, or uh, he... Uh, well, Lord Varaha is an eternal form. He resides okay. eternally in the spiritual world. Okay. And he came from, and, and describes after he killed the demon Hiranyaksha, then he returned to his own abode in the spiritual world. Uh, but like, uh, Hiranyaksha cannot go to spiritual world to approach uh, So he, uh, he came yeah. before, before, he, before the Hiranyaksha started his uh, sinful uh, activities. Um, like, I do not understand the... Uh, well, the, it, it was mentioned there are two Varahas at different times in different millenniums, right? Different colors. And one Varaha came to pick up the earth from the bottom of the universe and then the other Varaha came to fight with Haranyaksha. Okay. So, Varaha knew this that Varaha will be coming to uh, save Haranyaksha? Yeah, but, uh, Varuna, because he's a demigod, he's a very prominent demigod, so he knows the Leelas, he knows the Leelas of the Lord and he knew that in the future did it actually mention Lord Varaha? They actually said Varaha? Or does yeah, it just... I, the, I, the text I read just said Lord Vishnu. In the first, in the 17th chapter, 31st verse, 
and in the 18th chapter text verse second it mentions lord varaha 17th chapter but is that where the actual where lord where varuna was speaking yeah varuna started to speak in the last verse of the i think yeah let me see varuna continued mm. varuna it mentions lord vishnu in battle to is it lord vishnu who can give satisfaction in battle to you that's in text number 30 i don't see lord varaha there in the 31st it is written various incarnation like varaha what in the word for word meaning in the translation oh he assumes his various incarnations like and the like varaha yeah as well there's no mention of varaha there in the word for word meaning but prabhu pats added that in the, to help us understand uh, it, in the purport and well in the purport that's not the <laughs> text yeah it is in order to exterminate wicked fellows like you and to show his grace to the virtuous that he assumes his various incarnations like varaha so uh for the extermination he assumes virtuous to show his grace with a desire wicked persons yeah the, there's no real mention there about varaha in 17 where else there is it in 18 Yeah, like in the purport that Vishnu invokes incarnation, and in the eighteenth uh, text two, this 18. description of Varaha. Eighteen. Well, that's text two. Yeah, you, that's you. You've come all. My tree is describing. Mm -hmm. So my question is, how he got to know about the whole incarnation? which means it was already there in the in the like he was already appeared before uh, yunaksha oh yeah well before haranyaksha that what's happening maitreya is describing everything to vidura so maitreya heard about it all from his gurus right who is the guru of maitreya that was parashara muni right so it, through parampara they heard about Lord Varaha, because Lord Varaha is from the Satya Yuga. But now you know you come. This is five. Just uh, the speaking of Sri Mad Bhagavatam. You're hearing about Maitreya meeting to Vidura. It's just like five thousand years ago, just at the end of the uh, Dwapara Yuga, and just about the beginning of Kali Yuga. But Lord Varaha was long before that. Uh, so, uh, like, uh, like, Well, yeah, it's, it's one of it's one of the lila avatars who comes in every, like you sambhavami you get you get yeah. he's coming regularly and every day of brahma at least in every day of brahma will come maybe even in every day in every divya yuga comes like for example hiranyakashipu like how uh, he was full like he was already he was very sinful and he in various ways and finally uh bhai and uh, nashim dev appeared 
Uh, no. Yeah. No. Varanyaksha was there before Varaha. Mm -hmm. Trying to fight with people and so on. Yeah. And, and, that, and when and he was so maybe he was also responsible for the earth digging up different places responsible for the earth planet to fall into the bottom of the Garbhadak ocean. And by the time he approached Varuna, he approached Varuna. Lord Varuna knew. Lord Varuna didn't specifically mention Varaha, but he said, "Lord Vishnu, oh. Supreme Lord." Okay. And any form of the Supreme Lord is going to defeat him. Okay. So Varuna was pointing out Lord Vishnu in one of his different forms that he will definitely kill you. He'll definitely give you a fight. You want to fight? Fight him. Okay. Yes. Anybody else has questions? Uh, Maharaj, uh, now you just uh, told that uh, that's two Barahadev, one Barahadev to rescue the earth. And another Barahadev came to kill the nation. Is that? Uh, Maharaj, my question is clear. Yes, there are two Varahas. So, if so, if we consider that two Varahadev, then Maharaj, chapter 18, text 8. So, it is mentioned that the Lord gave the earth floating uh, within his uh, uh, site, yeah. something yeah. Maharaj's Yes, but it was, it, was, it was pointed out, it was pointed out earlier when we discussed about this, that Vyasadeva combined the two incarnations. He amalgamated the two Varahas into one for the sake of his narration here. But in other places, that indicates that there are two Varahas. So this is just something unique to Srimad Bhagavatam, that Srila Vyasadeva somehow is, re, you know, for the sake of convenience in his description, he combined the two Varahas into one. Marad, I understood before also the same thing, but in the, in the text itself saying that when the enemies are looking. So my question is that when the Lord rescued the earth, uh, that time, he, the, the same Barahadev didn't fight with uh, Hiranyakya. So then, who was the enemy there? Who were like, looking at? Well, the enemy stood looking on. Brahma, the creator of the universe, extolled the Lord, and the other demigods rained flowers on him. When the enemy stood looking on, in other words, Hiranyaksha was looking on. It is con it's not contradicting Maharaj because uh, Hiranyaka for Hiranyaka killing Hiranyaka, another Varadeva. So here in this Varadeva uh, who rescued the earth, that time if Hiranyaka was not there, then who was the enemy? Oh, Hiranyaksha could have been there. I mean, uh, this is how it's described here in this chapter. It's described like that. In Srimad Bhagavatam, he doesn't mention there are two Varahas. It's only in the purports Prabhupada mentions there are two Varahas. In the purport, it was mentioned, if you look back. But it's not mentioned in any of the actual texts of the Bhagavatam. But when you, when you go through other Puranas and different scriptural evidence, we find that there are two Varahas. And Jiva Goswami, he describes that Vyasadeva must have combined the two Varahas together and described them in this way. And that's what's happened here. So the Lord has described that the Haranyaksha is looking on when Lord Varaha is picking up the earth. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes? Anybody else?
No, if there are no more questions. Okay, so then we'll stop here. So then there's no class tomorrow. And next week, we're having class on Sunday. No class on Saturday. You have to do your closed book test on Saturday and Sunday will begin class. Text chapter number 20. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Jai. Gorbekta Vrinda ki jai. Jai.